As people are making their way in, um, just a quick introduction. My name is Stephanie. I'm part of the training team here. And so the training team hosts any group sessions you may have, um, or if you need one-on-one -on -one training for yourself or your teammates, um, we're the team to help you with you guys. So we work a lot with the realtor and residents, best practices, that kind of stuff. Um, and that's where I'm coming from on my end. Thanks, Steph. My name is Tegan. I am a client success manager. Um, actually got my start over on the LSA GMB team, GBP team now. Um, with my beginnings at Wailopo, but transitioned over to the CSM, thought uh, it would be good to host a uh, speed dating session on our LSA program because it's uh, pretty awesome, um, to be honest with you. So I'm um, excited to dive into that and uh, get started here. With that, I'll go ahead and share my screen here. I thought I'd just pull a couple of our clients' GBPs that we manage and kind of do, uh, like I said, a higher level overview on how we optimize that profile um, and all that good stuff and what the benefits um, um, to you as an user is. So this is what we call a GBP profile. So this is going to go ahead and include basically any basic information that um, um, relates to you as the agent, including contact information, products, pictures, reviews, and this is all hosted on Google, the number one search engine uh, in the uh, world. So obviously, if we can make our presence known here on the Google My Business side of things, the better chances of, you know, um, generating organic traffic, that type of thing, it, it exponentially goes up. So making sure that we have an optimized profile um, will help you know, make your your profile visible in the algorithm and all that good stuff. And so what we do um, in order to basically optimize those profiles is making sure that um, all your pictures are up to date, all your contact information is up to date. What we do on our end as far as a value add on to those is we add certain um, products down here in the product section. We also do include blog postings every other day. Um, or every three days or so. And then we also respond to your reviews. Um, so what we like to do when it comes to GB profiles and optimizing is if we want to jump into this product section, we actually tie in um, your home search site into your product section here. So if anybody's, you know, doing organic searches, they pop on your profile, we can actually click on this product section and this Lynn Ward tab, and this is going to bring you directly into your guys' home search site where, you know, the end user can obviously start doing searching and then ultimately register on your website. And now we're delivering that as an organic lead. So huge view, value add there. Um, so you have the actually the opportunity to choose what kind of um, products you want to add in there. So for instance, condos and townhomes, homes with fireplaces, waterfront homes, depending on where you're at in the country, um, you basically get a list to choose from. Hey, I want to promote, you know, homes with fireplaces, homes with pools, um, single family homes, that type of thing. When we go ahead and optimize that profile, we'll connect all those searches into the product section so it's easy for uh, people to find your home search site. So that's, so that's like, I think, Tegan, for like somebody like myself, I'm in Colorado. I don't necessarily need to show homes with a pool because I'm in Colorado, but homes with fireplace. And again, guys, like, you know, he mentioned before, I just want to reiterate this because when we're always talking about lead generation and saving you guys money, these are organic leads. Once they land on your site, if you didn't know this, you're going to know it now. They can only look at two properties before Wailopo says, you need to give us registration information. So the idea is that your Google My Business, Google the most trusted, you know, source that we all go to and we all want to know something, we Google it. They're going to see your products. They're going to click on your search site, be able to look at max two homes before Wailopo says, you need to give us some information. That's a free lead to you because it was an organic search. It doesn't cost you any money. And again, brand awareness, your search is going to obviously be rebranding, but obviously your search site is also going to have it. So it's really cool that like, again, that you guys are able to customize it. I live in Colorado, waterfront properties, not really an ideal here in this landlocked state, but ski resort access, you know, fireplace access, like he said, it's going to be a lot more customized to your area and what would work for you. Perfect. Well said, Steph. Um, yeah, so that that's kind of the, the first part of the, the value add that we add here on your GMB profile. The second value add is uh, we have the opportunity, and this is elected, of course, if you want us to respond to reviews. 
um, but we have the opportunity to do so. So when reviews come in, the algorithm or Google really takes a look into the responses of those reviews. And so we can take that off your plate basically and help you as far as algorithm purposes um, go uh, um, by responding to those reviews. Reviews are super important. Obviously, we, we don't do anything on our end to collect those reviews for you. So making sure that you're having a consistent stream of reviews coming in, no more than one or two per day. Try to focus on, you know, anywhere from five to 10 mark per week will really, really help you on the um, visibility of your ad as far as organic searching goes on Google. As well, if you have that component of LSA, also boost your LSA and the LSA rankings, which we'll cover in a little bit later. But basically, we tie the two profiles together. The, the reviews are then shared on both the GMB and the LSA. Um, and so making sure that you have a good outreach um, um, basically program to gather those reviews is really beneficial in the um, organic searches that you do with GMB and LSA. So I would say that's one of the most important parts on your guys' end that, that needs to be constant um, in order for the ad to perform well or the profile and the LSA to perform well. Um, moving down here a little bit, that kind of covers the reviews. What you'll also notice here is um, we have it's connected to Zillow. So this is actually done on Google's side of things. So the Google crawlers, making sure that SEO is good on all profiles. Google will basically use their crawlers to say, hey, this person, the address phone number matches up. Let's go ahead and share their, their Zillow profile or their Facebook profile. So making sure that SEO um, is up, something that our GMB department can definitely help with. Um, we're going to jump into kind of the pricing structure in a little bit and kind of go over schema coding to help with that process. Um, but we also have the availability to tie in other profiles in here as well. Perfect. And that's a great call out to some of the, I know there was, there's already a couple questions coming in. Um, so question was asked, can we attach reviews from other sites like Zillow? We can see evident in here that that's an option. Um, and then the other thing, and we're going to talk about pricing here in a second, um, but Tegan, are there any other places they can pull? I mean, Zillow is a pretty popular one that agents are going to be using, but are there any other reviews that we pull from? Um, or is Zillow probably the most common one that you see? I would say Zillow and Yelp get pulled out a lot. Um, yep. As far yep. as getting reviews made onto the Google uh, business profile, we can't necessarily pull the reviews from Zillow and put them into the review section on the actual GMB here. Basically, they're going to just be provided up here as separate links. Um, so I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Because there are two different, they left the reviews in two different spots. They left a review on Zillow. We can see that here and you could see the reviews from the web or they can leave a review on Google, um, on the Google profile page. And so because they're two different spots, that makes sense. Yeah, that that is absolutely correct. Google is pretty pretty proud about their reviews, so they won't necessarily let us go in and take reviews from Zillow and throw them into Google, but they do provide a way to promote those reviews on Zillow, so. Um, there's that. So kind of what we do is make sure everything's up to date. We enhance the profile, obviously optimize the features on the product section. Um, we respond to the views. The next thing that we do is we actually do blog postings. And what's really nice about these blog postings is the algorithm really likes it. It shows Google, hey, we're constantly active on this profile. Um, so make sure to promote my my basically my profile above anybody else's who's not doing the things that I'm doing. So um, with that, we basically do blog postings. Um, I believe every three days or so, three or four days, we're throwing another blog posting up there to um, make sure the algorithm is appeased and all that good stuff. So that's kind of in a nutshell what we do as far as the optimization goes. And then, of course, if there's anything like suspensions or help with issues, um, basically, we have a fast track with Google. Uh, we have a Google dedicated rep that can help with those issues um, so we can get a quick, quick turnaround time. I don't know if you guys ever dealt with Google on your own. <laughs> Typically, it takes a little bit for uh, problems to get solved. So we have a fast track into that to make sure that your, your account stays up and active and running. Would part of our optimization, Tegan, be something on the effect of that we, do we monitor, like if we see like you know, maybe I gave you like a one star because I didn't think you negotiated a price for me. Is that something that we are monitoring and like responding to bad reviews um, if we're optimizing their Google My Business profile? 
Yeah, so we're absolutely monitoring monitoring to that. Um, typically, we're only going to be responding to the good reviews because we want to make sure that those bad reviews, we can go one of two ways. If you don't think the, the review is authentic, we can go make a case to Google saying, hey, we don't know who this person is. Let's get this review, re review moved. The second option, if it was a legitimate review, is say, hey, we you got this one star review go ahead and take a look and respond because we're still appeasing the algorithm with a response to that bad review so um, we'll definitely make sure you're aware of it but we would prefer that you respond to those um, on your end which makes sense if you think about it agents because you would have you would probably have more insight into that experience why they were giving you a bad review um and if we said something that didn't really necessarily reflect how you wanted to respond to it and we don't want to take, you know, any ownership on that. That's something that you guys can handle. So hopefully you don't get a lot. Um, but, you know, every now and again, you guys have been agents, I'm sure, for a while. Every now and again, you might get somebody <laughs> um, that you might need to have a response to. But it's good to know, too, that we're responding to the positive ones because that's also going to only help you look even better in Google. Yep. Yep, absolutely. And I, I think that pretty much covers our optimization. Some good things to keep in mind to do on your guys' end is to Post local uh, market information. Use, you know, keywords in your post, your full name, realtor. Avoid phone numbers or contact URLs in the post, but uh, uh, use the provided link buttons like learn more or call now. And it, avoid any non-business posts like happy cat days unless you can turn that into something relating uh, to your business. So that's something you guys can do on your end to help, you know, with your local markets and making sure that we're appeasing the algorithm in a way. So. Okay. Um, um, just, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Just a couple more questions from the yeah. chat. So, um, and Kurt, if I'm not answering this, cause I'm reading it one way. So if I'm reading it wrong, let me know. But one question was asked is like, how do we make these kind of searches to push out to the masses? And I think he was referencing, um, above T and when we were looking at the product section, um, and that we had those different searches that we can choose like fireplace, um, houses with waterfront, that kind of stuff. I mean, there's a ton of ways that you could push that. I mean, you could have a QR code with your Google My Business stuff. You could have it on your business card. There's so many ways. And if you don't mind scrolling, Tegan, just so we can see that part at the top. Um, like if you have like a Google My Business, um, if you have like a, a contact card or like a QR code, or you put it on your business page or on your, excuse me, your business card, you can drive them here organically. Like there's a lot of different ways you could do it. Um, and definitely like ways that I've seen people do it is they'll have like a contact card in their follow-up boss that has like a link to this part. Like look at my Google reviews. I'll see people have like a QR code that says learn more about me um, and what others say about me. And then if you think about it, if I were to scan a QR code for this agent, I'm going to land here. I'm going to see that he's got over 600 reviews with a 4.7 rating. Like I'm already impressed. And then you've got the products there that if I click on that, it's going to show me the searches. So really what you're trying to do is drive them back to this part of the page right here, whether you're posting it organically, whether you're posting it elsewhere. Um, and then I think a really big question that's kind of getting asked, because of course it is, is, is there a cost associated with us managing their Google My Business and optimizing it in the way that you showed us here, Tegan? Yes. Yes, there is. So I got this little... Uh... Let me just drag this over to my screen. So this is the pricing that would be included in our GMB uh, or GBP um, profile. So you actually get a couple different options. One is our standard package. The other is our premium. Uh, for the standard package, it's $200 a month. This also does include LSA. So, but for our Canadian clients, it's still going to be the $200 a month if we're still just managing the, the Google My Business portion. Um, with the standard, you basically get um, the product posts, you get the blog updates, the review responses, and then the LSA GMB optimiz optimizations as far as the G GBP uh, goes. And then obviously the LSA is included in that. What I would say between the standard and premium pricing, if you don't have an in-house um, like social media marketer that is constantly going on your profiles and making postings, I would say $150 per month for us to go ahead and take that over for at least your GMB portion is a huge value. What we do on the premium side of things, we do um, agent spotlights, offer posts, open house posts, just listed posts, homes for sale posts, 
just sold posts. And then what I was talking about the schema coding is that we could actually help the Google crawlers, you know, as far as SEO goes, find those profiles and link them over into your Google My Business profile. So we had some coding uh, on your, uh, basically your website that would help um, make sure that SEO is optimized as far as Google My Business is concerned. So I feel like that's a huge ad. And then with the premium, you also do get the GBP map link uh, on the brand insight. So I'd say if you don't have a, it inside a, a basically a social media marketer, the premium package is definitely the way to go. Standard package is still super great, but those are kind of the pricing tiers that we have for um, GBP as far as that's concerned. Yeah. And again, just on the the questions that are being asked with pricing, remember you guys are going to get a copy of this recording and we can share that pricing with you. Um, and again, even if you're not using the LSA, you're still going to get the GMB and that's going to be the standard 200 per month. Um, so just something to keep in mind, if you're still thinking budget wise, then this is a ample opportunity to talk to your client success manager. Um, so also talk to your client success manager. They can talk to you about, um, um, you know, what your budget would work if you're going to take money to do this, maybe you're moving money from elsewhere. Um, and those are people like Tegan, who's in that client success manager role or other client success managers you guys here, um, you guys have here that can handle those, or have those conversations with you if you're kind of deciding what you should do. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. And really the, the intake is fairly simple. If you guys want to get the process started, I'm sure we'll plug in a couple of the sign up forms along with the webinar, but there's a couple of options that you guys have. We can create this profile for you if you don't want to, don't have one currently, or we can easily transfer that that profile into our management, um, so we can start making those posts and optimizing the profile. So, and all that takes is just a simple sign up form. Doesn't take too long, um, and we go from there. And yes, if you have uh, multiple locations, because we have a lot of teams like uh, Gabe Cordova's team, there is they have offices in Denver and Boise. So if you have multiple GMB, like uh, Google My Business profiles because of where you're located, um, we can manage all of them for you. So um, we and we've done this. That's why I say like Gabe and those we uh, we do manage multiple teams once. So I know there's a lot of questions coming in because this is a powerful and exciting product. Um, so just trying to make sure we're answering those for you. But yes, it doesn't matter how many Google My Business pages you have. Um, if you're spread out through all the U.S., so we can help you with all of them. <laughs> yep, certainly. certainly. So that pretty much covers it on the GBP portion or GMB portion. Um, and we could transition it into LSA. Is there any questions? Do we want to open any other questions as far as GBP is concerned? I think we answered them. Um, and this, um, and yes, this is going to be recorded. We did just drop in some links in there, some helpful tools for you guys in there. Um, and again, um, if you have any last minute questions about it, let us know in the chat really quick, only because we're going to segue into LSA. And that is when, if my Canadian clients, um, I'd love for you to stick around, but I will say this, it's not a product you guys have available right now. So might be a little bit more, um, and if you don't know if you already have this, and if you're wondering, like, do I already have this platform, reach out to support at wilepo.com or reach out to your client success manager. They will look at your profile, see what you're already paying for. Um, and again, that's a great time to have a conversation with us if you want. And if you don't have a Google My Business and you're ready to start, definitely have a conversation with us. We can also help with that as well. Certainly, certainly. Okie dokie. I guess we'll go ahead and uh, jump in there, over to the LSA as long as I got the thumbs up from you, Steph. Yeah. Um, well, let me ask you one more question because yeah. I don't actually know this off the top of my head. And if we don't know, we can always uh, ping the team. If they have multiple locations, is it 200 per location on that charge or? No, it actually gets, uh, we group it all into under one. So you're only charged one tech fee uh, for um as many as you want to add on there under our management. So typically people don't have a lot of those. It's usually one, two, or three, but we'll manage that under one tech fee. Um, so that. Perfect. So for my, my, my agent, and I'm sorry, it's a little bit higher in the chat, but for my agent that has four offices, that's a heck of a deal. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Tegan. I think that was all that I saw on my end. And if we're missing anything, again, let us know. Um, we put in some resources. We're going to talk about more, but when you're talking about getting into the weeds of stuff, again, this is very high level. If you're wanting to know how do I manage it, how do I press these buttons, then that's where we're going to have you meet with the team and they're going to be able to dive into that a little bit more with you. 
Um, so just something to keep in mind. I know that there might not, we might not have been able to answer everything, but if it's getting into the weeds, then that's when we're going to have you meet with uh, the LSA team or the GMB team, and they can uh, dive into further with your account with you. Cool. Let's go ahead and jump into LSA, the LSA side of portion. So the way LSA works is basically um, it's a organic lead gen uh, that's provided by Google. Typically, what to how to access LSA is, you know, I'm I'm somebody that's looking to either buy or sell my home, um, and I need to find a real estate agent. So I come into Google and I go, you know what, realtors in Phoenix, Arizona. What's going to populate actually is going to be up here at the top, the very top, even before your PPC ads, is going to be what is called LSA or local service ads. So they promote basically two agents up here at the top on the main um, uh, landing screen. But if we come down here and click more real estate agents, we're actually going to get a carousel of up to 20 agents um, in that specific service area. So obviously, if you're up here towards the top, most likely you're going to get calls more, more often than not compared to those people that are down here at the bottom. If you're up the, here at the top, there's really three things that go into account on making sure that your LSA ranks above everybody else's. The first and foremost, I think is probably the most important kind of relating back to GBP is gathering reviews on a consistent basis. If we do, don't have a good system of gathering reviews, it's going to be really, really hard for us to generate leads off of LSA. So if you're thinking about getting over into LSA, just make sure that you have a good way of collecting reviews, whether that's, you know, after closing, after meeting with a person, it, it doesn't have to necessarily be a, a client that you close on. It could be, you know, a contractor that you work with on a consistent basis. So just talk to us or the, uh, the GMB LSA team on what ways to get creative on generating those reviews. And so we can get a good system in place so we can make sure that this ad ranks at the top so we get consistent calls coming into it. So I'd say that's number one. Number two is going to be what we call um, basically uh, uh, make sure that you're answering your phone. So kind of how we're generating leads off this is people are coming in here. They're going to be clicking this call button or giving um, your phone number right here a call. Google tracks when and how you answer your phone. So once a person gives you a call through your ad, we have to make sure that we're picking up the phone. It's called a pickup rate. We need to make sure that we're answering at least 80% of our calls on that initial call. Otherwise, Google sees that as a no-no and kind of starts kicking you down the list. What's really nice about us managing that is we actually have a dedicated call setter that's already included in the pricing for LSA. So when a call comes in, our call center agents are going to be answering that phone call, um, qualifying the lead on whether they're buying or selling. If they are one of those two options, we're going to proceed to transfer that live transfer that phone call over to you for you to then qualify them further. However, since this is an organic lead generation, um, we can't control the people who are calling into this ad. So that's what's nice about the call center is we can um, kind of sort out any solicitors or people that are not interested in buying or um, selling of real estate. Um, and we actually terminate that call right then and there. Once that call is terminated, we actually go back to Google and say, hey, this call was illegitimate. Can I please get a refund for the for basically that charge on that phone call? It goes through a dispute process. We all manage that. We make sure that we get those disputed in a timely manner, all that good stuff. And then basically you're credited back for that. But making sure that you're picking up that phone, even on the live transfers, when our call center is transferring to is huge. So I'd say that's number two in the ranking factors here. And then number three is going to be just making sure that we have a good budget allocated um, for LSA. LSA, we charge a little bit differently. So we actually bill in arrears for LSA. So we take a given month, all the calls that you receive, all legitimate calls, we basically charge um, at, at the end of that month. So let's say you receive five legitimate calls in the month of October, we're charging for those calls um, in, in uh, November. With that being said, allocating a budget, a good budget for Google algorithm purposes is behoove of us. Our minimum spend is 300, but depending on your service area, we want at least a, a good range of including up to 10 leads with that budget. Google will tell us, kind of give us a price range on what that budget would be to 
um, satisfy those 10 leads. And that's something you can get with the LSA department or your client success manager um, to see kind of, hey, these are my service areas. What is a good budget to run for these um, for this ad? Typically, that budget can fall into anywhere between $1,500 and $3,000 per month. Don't let that scare you because we're only charging for valid real estate um, leads that come through there. So typically, people aren't spending completely through that budget. If you have a good performing ad, you can expect to spend you know anywhere from $200 to $300 if you get legitimate calls. But I would say those are the three main things that go into the ranking of this LSA ad for sure. And do you be, do you find that, you know, if somebody is not in the top three right now, is it possible to move them up there? Um, and it's kind of evident by what you said, like reviews and things of that sort is what's going to help. And we can help optimize that. Like you said earlier too, like being able to help you guys get reviews. And I always tell agents guys, like in another life, I was a transaction coordinator, ask for reviews when they're happy. Like you don't have to wait until the end of the transaction. Ask for a review after the inspection went well, and they loved how that process went. Ask for a review when we're at, like, right before we go to closing. Like, when they're in those happy times, that's the best time to be asking for those reviews. They're going to be organic. They're going to be, you know, gushing about how amazing you are. You just helped me through, like, this hard inspection period. I was stressed. I didn't know what to happen, and you guided my way through it. Like, having those kind of reviews is only going to help you stand out compared to a review that's like, oh, yeah, they helped me at my closing. Good night. Like, you know what I mean? And so right. it's just so much more. I think sometimes as agents, we tend to only ask at the end or we get like a little shell shock to ask, but like, you did a good job. Make sure they're putting that online for you. Um, make it easy for them. Send them a quick email or send them a quick link for you. Like make it as easy as possible for them. But the sooner you can ask for those, again, the sooner. And you'll see the difference between even the two we're seeing here. There's one with 42 and there's one with 429. Um, so those reviews are going to help. One of the things that I, I hear from agents a lot is I'm not at the top. I don't, I have a concern that I'm not there. And the first thing I look at is like, you haven't had a new review in like six months. Like that's a big part of it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And you're totally right on that Steph. And when it comes to reviews, don't let the people with the 429 reviews scare you and be like, I, there's no potential way that I can get up there. Because Google actually doesn't measure the quantity of reviews. They they measure the consistency of reviews. So kind of getting back to the GMB and how this all ties in, trying to gather, you know, one to two reviews a day, five to 10 max per week is going to really, really help significantly with this ad. I would say it's probably the biggest ranking factor, to be honest with you. And to be honest with these top three here, every time we refresh this page, they're going to have, or they should, now that I do it, it's not doing it, but they should kind of be rotating through the top three here. So everybody gets a chance of being at top. So the bottom one was, it wasn't the first <laughs> one I watched. It was the bottom <laughs> one, was the, Gon the yeah. Gonzalez group before. Um, would you say, you know, cause you're mentioning like one to two a day, does Google m care if we do, like, if I gave you a review today, Tegan, because you were an amazing at inspection. And then I gave you another review, maybe in like two weeks when we close is that okay if we have like somebody doing multiple reviews? It may get filtered. It may. Google is very particular on what they do. So if they see anything coming from like the same IP address, for instance, like if you have somebody in your office and they're connected to your Wi-Fi and you try to have multiple people, you know, send and review from that same IP address, Google is going to go, Hey, what's going on? There's a bunch of reviews happening in this in this certain spot. So I would I would um, make sure like if we're gonna do that, at least have it a couple months apart. That's gonna um, ha be have better results and less chances of that that review getting filtered out. So if you wanted to do a review at like the beginning of the home buying process and then another one at the end, that shouldn't be an issue. I think the two weeks kind of going back to back there could possibly be filtered by uh, um, Google, but that's a good question. But at the same point, if you and, you know, if myself and my partner are buying this house together and that's two different people living, leaving two different reviews under two different names, we'd be in the clear. And I know none of my agents would even think about this, but I'm just going to say it. Don't go into Google and try to leave yourself reviews because like Tegan just said, they're going to filter it and they're going to see it. So obviously they're going to look at the IP. They're going to see that kind of stuff. Don't do that. I didn't think you would do it anyways, but we're just going to cover it just in case. 
But in the event that, you know, George is asking, can the same person make multiple reviews? No, but I will leave a review to Tegan today because the inspection was great. And then when we close in a couple of weeks, James, my partner, will leave one on the over the over uh, overall experience and how it was. Um, so yeah, and it's hard, right? Like it's it's always a battle of like getting them to give their reviews and things like that. But that's why I say it's like you gotta ask when they're happy. Like <laughs> they're more likely don't ask, and I'm saying this, guys. Like don't ask them two weeks after closing. By then, they've already been in the house. They're worried about like, okay, now I got a mortgage. Like do it when they're happy. If there's two partners, then have them do it later. Maybe in a month later, you could do it. Like what he said, there's a couple months, but it's really just a matter of timing those those kind of um, those kind of conversations with them and when you should be asking for it. So totally awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great point. And kind of get back um, to the how do you get LSA going? Um, so there, there's really a couple options that we have here. So. You have an existing LSA, great. We'll basically uh, send you an invite if you wanted to fill out a form. Fill out that form, we'd send an invite, add our management onto that, transfer it over to us. Um, but we can also create one for you. Um, so there's no issues with that. However, if you are in a saturated market, there is some caveats. Because when you're in a saturated market, this list of 20 agents, it actually used to be 50, but they kind of squish it down. And so for performance and making sure if you, we want to get you enrolled into LSA in a saturated market, there's a couple things that we would need. We have to, we'd have to take a look at your areas. If you have an LSA set up great already, we can typically transfer those in without an issue. However, we're setting up a new one in a saturated market. If you have a, 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 a an established Google My Business profile, that's going to be huge because once we create the LSA, we can just kind of plug those reviews in and then you're automatically ranking. However, if you're in a saturated market and you don't have a GMB, we would have to get approval with the team to make sure that we'd be able to run those ads successfully. So whether that's in California, Florida, um, those are the kind of things that we have to look at if you're trying to create a new pro profile to make sure that it's successful when we launch it. So those are just some caveats as far as enrollment goes. But if you already have an LSA GMB, perfectly good. We'll send you those forms over. We'll get you enrolled. No problem. And I'm going to throw in the chat, guys. If, if it looks like I've been looking intently over there, it's because the chat's over here. And I yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're good. <laughs> um, I'm going to throw in the chat the links to um, sign up if you guys want. Um, and this is a good call out. So there's two different budgets you're you're thinking about if you're going to be doing Google My Business and LSA, right? Because you've got your $200 tech fee plus whatever ad spend you're going to do on the ads. Am I thinking that correctly, Tegan? That is correct. Yeah, basically the $200 is a tech fee um, that's charged monthly. Any calls that are uh, come into the ad and we get charged by Google from, that's what we're charging in arrears. Yeah. And keep in mind too, guys, like, I think that there's always some hesitation because, you know, we could throw out some big numbers, like you could spend money on LSA. But I think the reason that people gravitate towards this, this ads more than, I mean, all our ads are great, but I think the reason that a lot of people gravitate towards this one is the fact that you are only paying for valid leads. If I called Tegan and I said, Hey, Tegan, I'm an inspector in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I want to let you know, I'm an amazing inspector. You should use me. It's not a valid lead, you know, and he's not going to have to be charged for that. So yes, there's a cost associated with it, but there's also, and sorry about that guys, but also you're going to be paying for the leads that are qualified. You're not going to have some of those scenarios. So it's just, I mean, obviously I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money, but it's just something to think about. Like sometimes those high price ranges make people a little nervous, but you are paying for valid leads and, and we would be the ones having those disputes with Google um, to make sure you're not being charged for Stephanie, the inspector, who's not a valid lead. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and kind of piggyback off that, you know, this is an organic lead generation. I would say the leads that are generated off this are typically bottom of the funnel. They're looking to do something, work with a realtor right away. So it kind of takes that nurturing follow-up kind of out of out of it. On the flip side of that, the volume necessarily isn't always there, but the quality is there. And making sure that we're getting those reviews in will only benefit you in a good way on trying to get those calls. I know I t when I was actually on this team, um, there was a person last year that closed, 
I think it was like 13 to 17 deals off of LSA. So, and it's just because they had a great cadence for, you know, gathering reviews and making sure that their uh, ads stayed up there towards the top. So if you don't have, like I said, if you don't have a good way of gathering reviews and you want to get LSA, get something in an internal SOP to make sure you're collecting those reviews because really good things could happen out of LSA. But if we don't have a good structure for the reviews, you, you can't expect much out of it. So. And really, that's pretty much it. There is some verification stuff um, to get LSA set up. Google verifies your license information. There are some states that require require background checks. Um, and then to launch or get the LSA live, we have to make sure that we have at least five reviews made to our Google My Business. And that's when the, the, the ad basically launches. Um, so there's that. And then if you have a team of agents, um, we can absolutely add teams on there as well. Basically, we promote just a single agent here at the top, but we can add team members onto the actual profile here. Um, I don't know if she has any, but they typically stay down there at the bottom. But we can, if you have multiple agents, we can add them on there as well. So, and any, oh, go sorry, ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm throwing in the chat um, some help articles that are going to have like the like main, like here's all of the stuff on Google My Business. Here's all the stuff that Google LSA, because it's a lot. Like we're not, I know it's a powerful product in Google. I don't know, maybe because I've been around since before Google, I'm always like, oh, Google, like <laughs> how do we get a hold of them and things like that? But that's the reason that we have this product. That's the way, reason we have this team. And that's the reason that we manage and optimize this for you um, is to take away some of this. Um, and that's a good question that was just asked. This is all managed in-house. So the Google My Business teammates, all of those, they're in-house Wiloco employees. Yes, we have a Google contact that we can reach out to when things go awry and we need to do that. Um, but we're the ones that are handling it for you guys. So it's in-house, it's a management fee, 200, 350, depending on which way you want to go. Um, and then if you want to run the LSA ads, and that's additional cost for you as well. Um, but because it's in-house, we also are going to offer support. So that's where I've been throwing in those help articles. And then we host every other Thursday, a Google My Business and LSA webinar for once you're live, that is run by that team and they will answer questions you guys have. I'll throw that in the chat as well, of course. Um, but there's a lot of support here. So if you're feeling like, okay, I, I, I'm excited, but I don't think I know everything. I still have some questions. That's totally fine. I, we love questions. We welcome questions. Um, but just know that that's what that team is here for. Like you will have dedicated people. That's what Tegan did prior to his client success manager role. Um, and that's our, that's our goal is to optimize it, to get you to the top, to get you that organic, um, that organic leads and that SEO that you guys want, putting you at, putting you at the top of Google, my business. So, um, Again, just setting that expectation because I know there was a couple questions in there of like who handles it? Is, are we do we are we Google? Um, and no, <laughs> we're not. <laughs> Perfect. I think that's pretty much a high level view of both the LSA GBP um, program. I do see something here into the how do we add up multiple agents and where do they show up? So I actually have this guy's insurance. So we actually so this is going to be the dashboard. We can add agents basically on this profile and budget page. I don't know if this person is going to have any agents, but basically we do have to verify those agents as well. Um, but it looks like it's only Allison. So basically we could add, add the uh, professionals here. They should show up basically on here. Let's see if we can find somebody with that person doesn't have one. They basically show up at the bottom here underneath the details. Not a lot of people. Okay, for instance, this at this business, we would show basically your agents down here at the bottom. Unfortunately, we can't have a direct line to them. Basically, how the call routing works is it goes from Google to our call center, and then from our call center over to um, either a cell phone or a lot of people, if they have teams, they also set up a follow box follow up boss inbox number if you have follow up boss as well so once we transfer that call we can actually ring the whole entire team for the first person to pick up can answer and take care of that lead but this is where we would add people at the uh or people on your team um on the actual lsa ad there itself hope that helps melanie you see any other questions on your end there 
I don't. I did want to show my screen if it's okay while yeah. maybe Tegan looks at the rest. Um, it's the same. And I'm not gonna lie, it's very similar to what he saw, but it's just a couple more people. And I don't know if sometimes it helps to see. Yeah. But like I said, like I'm in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And so it just defaulted to my zip code. And so with this team, as you can see here, team, and then she actually had two agents down here. She had another realtor, and then she's the broker owner. Um, so just a couple of different ways that it can leverage for you. And it is funny um, because I do live in Colorado Springs and I am actively looking. And so sometimes I will see some of our clients. I'm not going to tell you who's the client on this, but <laughs> um, I do see some of the clients in here and it's really cool. And if you think about it, what's what does draw people a lot to this particular lead source is, remember, these are all online leads, right? So theoretically, they could all take time to nurture, to use, um, to they could have some time to nurture because they're meant to top of funnel leads. The difference though with LSA leads is that they're actively Googling realtors in your area. So I am I say this with, I'm not guaranteeing that they're gonna be ready to go tomorrow, but they may. They may have a sense of urgency a little bit more, or even if they're not ready yet, they may have a sense of urgency to talk to a realtor sooner because of the fact that they're Googling it. Um, so that's where you know they differ a little bit than like your Facebook leads where they're just scrolling and they saw a house they liked and they clicked on it. These people are actively Googling those keywords and looking at your profile before either dialing or landing on your search site. So just a little bit of different kind of conversation. I mean, I would say it's still the same kind of conversations. It's still an opening line of, you know, thanks for searching on my site. Tell me more about what has you looking at this time. Um, but you can maybe have a little bit more. Um, you might see that the, they are a little bit more ready to go or at the very minimum, at least ready to have a conversation with you to get those steps in action for when they're ready to purchase. Totally. I did see Sean asked a question here. Can I run an LSA ad myself, but have your office manage the calls? So Sean, not necessarily. We still, you still have a hundred percent access to LSA, GMB, GBP to do whatever you want on those specific profiles. You feel free to go in there and add them. We can't just run, you know, the call center portion um, on the ad, we'd have to manage it. And with that management, we're disputing the calls, obviously, on your behalf, and then making sure that the profiles are optimized. And we can do that in conjunction with you. So, um, but we would still need to basically enroll you in our management in, uh, in order to run that ad. All right. Um, I believe that is all we have. And perfect. Yes, we'll put it in the email. <laughs> all right. Um, anything else, Tegan, before we wrap? I think that's good on my end. Perfect. Thanks, Tegan. Appreciate all your help. Thank you, Steph. Talk Thanks, to you soon. Guys. Have a good one. Bye. -bye.